when livestock farming or keeping is really the livelihood of a certain community, it's really part of their culture, and they must do everything possible to see that they continue with that kind of livelihood. Like in Moroto, really turning these people away from livestock keeping, it, uh, it is something which is almost get, going against their culture. So they will always look for a way of how do they go about this? Where do they uh, run to in, time, in terms of uh, catastrophic droughts? Some of them are, are planting some shrubs which you really withstand very harsh conditions in their areas and that are palatable to the animals, so that animals eat them. It is not only climate, but also financial problems have also arisen. Sometimes the rate at which we sell our, our milk is low. The production cost sometimes tends, tends to, to rise. And as a result, of course, you find grazing is not all that easy. The soils are really poor, I should say, especially in Kamuli and, uh, and uh, Moroto. Uh, first of all, they've been so much exposed, uh, especially where there's been a lot of grazing in northern Kamuli and in Moroto. There is no rain. If, if any, it is very little. And uh, the grass does not grow to that expectation. And uh, sometimes we even get to lack of water, drinking water for the animals. But fortunately enough for, for me here, I have the night control boho here. It helps me. But when the drought is heavy, then of course I depend on the night control water. No, the water is bad. This is for animals and the plants. Irrigation. Go to the well, bring water, pour in the, in the trough, and the animals drink from the cow, from that trough. The objective of the whole thing is to get environment natural environment. This was the, this protected land of mine. It was used for grazing my animals, but now there is no, uh, there is no grass for animals to graze. We do move long distance to other districts like Soroti uh, for, to look for pasture and to graze our, our animals. People in Moroto, who are grazing their animals, whenever there's prolonged drought, they cross over to the neighboring districts to see that their animals don't die uh, in, the, in, the, in the drought. Uh, and of course, the, that one also has its associated problems. Where at times it ends up in a conflict, people conflict over resources, because where they go, they also find them with their animals and therefore, uh, it may not really go very well. But looking at uh, the districts of Kamuli, Morota, and Kapuchora, I know that, of course, there is more livestock farming in uh, northern Kamuli and also the Moroto. Okay, 10 years before, this place was very nice. We have a nice rainfall. We have enough pasture for the animals. Uh, we have trees for firewood. But as by now, as we speak now, there is nothing like that. We are now lacking firewood. Uh, we are lacking pastures for the animals. That's why we have decided now to adopt zero grazing. We we have supported by land care, uh, action aid, uh, IUCN. So as we speak now, <clears throat> some, farm, some few farmers have started adopting by planting trees, uh, doing zero grazing. Kapchora in the highlands is really more of uh, agriculture 
area and uh, there, are, there are less uh, animals there. Uh, some of them, of course, they are really used for transport in the hills, like the donkeys and all that, but uh, not really for the real stay, the main stay of the people there. Livestock has the advantage that when harsh conditions hit your area, like your grazing area, the pastures uh, get reduced or get depleted, you can easily move away your livestock to areas where there is more, pas more pasture and more water for them to drink. Because we know that climate change has affected so much even the quality and the quantity of pasture for these animals in the areas where they are, uh, and especially in the drought corridor.